Hello and welcome to the special Women on Wealth broadcast. I'm Nozi Pombanjwa. Now, South Africa has the highest rate of domestic violence in the world. It's estimated that every six hours, a woman is killed by her intimate partner in this country. The South African Medical Research Council has found that 40% of men have hit their partners and one in four men has raped a woman. It makes sense then that South Africa is taking part in the global 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children campaign. This runs from the 25th of November to the 10th of December. Today, the Winning Women series will acknowledge some of the champions fighting to curb violence against women and children. Joining me today is actor Patrick Shai, who's the ambassador for Brothers for Life, Mbuisela Bertha, media specialist at Sonka Gender Justice, Mishak Kekane, founder and chairman of Dads in the Picture, and Kwezi Lomso Mbandazayo, program officer for the One in Nine campaign. A warm welcome to all my guests. Patrick, uh, let's start off with how do you get men to connect with the issue of fighting against violence for women, against women and children, uh, and not seeing this as an insulated woman's issue? Well, you will remember that I did go out publicly about my, me as a perpetrator of violence against uh, women and children, uh, in particular reference to my wife. Uh, but when I made the turnaround, I felt it was my duty now to speak to other men and educate them and tell them it is not cool to, to do so. And how we do, how we do that with Brothers for Life, uh, we have formed quite a lot of men's um, forums, one of which is uh, Kuluman Dota, which uh, encourages men to come out in the open and talk about those issues. I think I realize that men lack the, the language of communication. Uh, we are socialized to believe that uh, the only language you have is the physical language mm. or is that of abuse, uh, be it emotional or any other way. It is the only language available to us. So we needed to create for them a, a, a language through which they can communicate their frustrations, their aspirations, their fears, their own concerns without necessarily having to be violent. Mbuisela, your experience spans across the African continent. Is this a South African problem or are men on the continent grappling with the same communication issues that Patrick raises? Well, in fact, it's actually a universal thing. It's got <laughs> nothing to do with African men. It's universal. The difference may be issues of class, mm. issues of race, but we, a, 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 we, we're dealing with the same uh, narratives as men throughout the world. And those narratives are what Patrick has adequately um, articulated issues of you know in total Kali men don't cry tigers don't cry but all of those things Sissy are universal things because where do we learn these things where do we learn that in or okay. men don't cry well okay, yeah. so, so, you know global global village which is a society that tells me that you see they there's what I call social scripting there's a particular script yes. and that script is given to both you and I men and women and that script says there are do's and don'ts. And when you do the do's, you get, a, you get rewarded. But when you are a man, you don't do what you're supposed to do. You also get punished. Either you are ostracized, either you are marginalized, all of those things. So, and you are from, from the grave or from the cradle to the grave, you are always expected to live within the social script. If you get out of the social script, society has a way to bring it back. Oh. Let me take you on on that and, and maybe bring Mishak uh, into this as a question. Society seems to be very lenient on absent fathers. And you have pinpointed that as a potential source of the problem that emanates and rears its head uh, in violence against women and children. Give us some insight into the connection between an absent father and the violence that we see in South Africa against women and children. We actually have had the studies that say 70% of our young children, boys and girls, are growing up without their fathers. And th there, is a, there is a thinking that it's actually a new problem. That's why we actually call our young people lost generation. But actually it's not a new problem. It's a problem that's always been there back in the days when migrant labor systems were, were, were put in place. So we have found out that yes, in the absence of the fathers, the mothers are left to do all the duties and raise the child. 
And that is not what mothers are supposed to be doing. That is not what they have been equipped with to do. They have been equipped with taking the whole world, yes, truly. But they cannot do parenting. Parenting Michelle, is this both a scapegoat parents. that we're allowing men to use the scapegoat and say, well, they had an absent father and this is why they potentially are uh, being violent. It can never be a scapegoat. No. It, that, that is why we're saying the, the men who, who are out there doing the best they can, they need to come up front. They need to come and show the men who are not doing it to say it is not a woman's role. It is not, you know, the children are not just for the women. It's for everybody. It's for us men as we need to be part of the solution. Patrick, I'll let, you, I'll let you come back on that. Let's let's maybe first get Kwezi to play referee for us. One of the things we wanted to make sure today is that as much as we were celebrating men who are champions of this fight, that we didn't lose the voice of women. Your sense of what you've heard so far, does it make sense as a woman who is at the forefront of fighting against violence against women and children? It makes sense um, and it, it absolutely needs to be elevated in the sense where we need to understand that violence against women happens within a patriarchal context. Patriarchy privileges men and subordinates women and that is the context and we can't run away from that. So for me, the agents of women's liberation, the people at the forefront of women's liberation need to be women. Men can act as partners, as supporters and I was saying to Mboiselo before the show at the back or even to the side, but cannot lead the struggle because what you're then doing is you're reinscribing the system of domination as a nicer domination. You're saying, mm. now you need to protect us because still we're not <coughs> autonomous beings that can be agents of our own liberation. I think that's going to uh, rub you up the wrong way, so I want you to... to to agree. We have to agree. I don't, look, I don't, I don't need to protect anybody. In fact, I, look, I do this work and I'm saying to her, I have a particular investment I am raising three of my kids. And the sole reason is that I want my son to, to know that women's bodies are not objects. And I want to raise the two girls, Usbong and Jalo and Latiwe. When they walk the streets, wherever they are, they don't have to look over their shoulders. Mm. So look, I have a personal interest. And I make no apologies it's about it. it. So a supporting on. role, yes. a role to the side, but not at the forefront absolutely, of the Absolutely, absolutely. I, 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 I think... I'm in agreement with all views, but I think I've got to be in the forefront as a man uh, and become the agent of change. Change must begin with me. Mm. I have a problem with us and them because it's not. You know, we are brought into this world to live together as, 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 mm. as, as men and women. And um, I have a problem when in South Africa and the world we begin to see a focus on, on the victim, um, and which, which we should. You know, take the girl child to school, to work, and, and blah, blah, blah. And we're leaving this boy child, who is going to grow up and marry the very same girl child who has been resourced. What then do we do? What kind of a, are we going to create a balanced yes, yep, families nice. and all that? Wait, let, me, let, let, let me bring Mishak in uh, on this issue, because the boy, the boy child issue has also uh, been amplified as a potential issue in this country, and that we're overlooking these, uh, these boy children as we focus on the them <coughs> being the woman uh, mm. and the girl child in particular. How do you address that? How do you respond to that? Are we forgetting the boys in the equation? At the end of the day, we're saying we are wiring from a, from, from a very early age. We need to wire the boy child and the girl child correctly. We need to empower the boy child to know, for instance, he can only learn from a man how to take care of a woman. Because yeah. the woman would, you, I, in a certain context, you are right, the mother will teach the child certain things. A boy will grow up looking up to their mother and respecting their mother. And in return, they'll respect all the women, including even the ones they will go into relationships with. Yep. And unless we equip them with how to handle certain situations as adults, they will then have a problem of failing because they'll try and use the influence of too much mothering right. to address issues they should be setting. Let's bring Quiz in. Except parenting has, over decades and centuries, happened in various formulations and formations. A lot of people are parented by same-sex marriages, um, by wide, wide families, by families that do not have men in the families. And those people are necessarily broken or less than for not having these figures. I'm not saying that parenting should only be women's work because that just further burdens women. But I am saying that there's nothing wrong with yeah. women parenting all their children as 
they've been doing for I'm sure most of us in this room. So you're raising another issue and I want us to quickly address it before we move on. Do you get a sense that gay and lesbian issues uh, as they relate to violence are maybe being swallowed up by the broader campaigns for lack of a better word uh, as we just focus on violence against women and children and not going into the nuances of some of the violence that that particular part of us of our society faces? I don't think they're being swallowed up. I think um, it depends where you're looking. I think it depends who is framing those issues and how they're framing them. And I know that at the 1 in 9 campaign, we talk about patriarchy, we talk about heteropatriarchy, we talk about heterosexism. And that for us encompasses a system of domination that takes into account race, class, sexual orientation, ableism, wealth, as all systems that seek to delegitimize particular bodies from others. So we see violence right. against queer people as a manifestation of patriarchy, as an offshoot of violence against women. We're almost out of time, so I want to quickly bring in the justice system. Uh, let's talk about that quickly, Patrick. One, your personal experience, and also just taking a cue from some of the high profile cases we've seen in South Africa. Is the justice system supportive of the fight to protect women and children against violence? I, th I think what is coming across on, on the panel here, uh, it's a clear indication that we are not talking to each other. Uh, we're talking about each other. And uh, with regards also to, to for me, it's, 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 not, uh, it's, it's not about who should do, be doing what. I think the issue of violence, it's my responsibility and equally so your responsibility as a woman. Uh, dual parenting, it's a responsibility for both. In terms of justice system, I don't think the justice system is talking to the campaigns and the programs that we are talking about, or the justice system is talking to what the president, Jacob Zuma, said when he launched the 16 days of, of no activism against uh, violence on women, the Count Me In campaign. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's talking to that. And we've seen with the handling of high profile cases, as in the latest yesterday with uh, the Diwani case, you know, it becomes such an issue for people to bring evidence uh, on, 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 in, into the courts. And the courts will shred this and that and that. And with, with the, um, with the uh, uh, Pristorius's case as well, it was, and unfortunately, these are things that happen in cases that involve women. And that's all we have time for, for this special Women on Wealth broadcast. A very big thank you to my guests, Patrick Shai, Ambassador for Brothers for Life, Mwisela Bertha, Media Specialist at Sonke Gender Justice, Misha Kekana, Founder and Chairman of Dads in the Picture, and Kwezilom Sombandazayo, Program Officer for the One in Nine campaign. Remember that you can get in touch with us, but that's by following me on Twitter, at Enozi Pombandra, and of course using the hashtag WinningWoman or Women on Wealth. Tweet us your thoughts about the show. Uh, until next time, we'll see you. Stay empowered.